Welcome to the Story Tinker Podcast, a place for in-depth analysis of stories, mainly from Webtoon. Co-hosted by sharp, witty, and dare I say thirsty fans, we dive deep in every episode, analyzing character struggles, relationship development, and of course, theories. We also interview people working in creative industries. You can follow The Story Tinker on YouTube, podcast platforms, and social media. For bonus content, sneak peeks, and more, you can support The Story Tinker on Patreon. We're really appreciative of your likes, subscribes, follows, comments, and ratings on all platforms. Thanks for listening to The Story Tinker, and let's get started. So, hi everyone, and welcome to episode 108 of Purple Hyacinth Strain Survivors. And it is the third episode that was released on one shot for the season three premiere. So you, I love being able to fast pass. So like I never, um, Mindy knows that I, I used to not fast pass and stuff. So like this is my first time really like getting into like the fast pass for Purple Hyacinth. And I was just like zooming through these and it's just like, oh my God. Like, so I just love no, that. Like binging method. six episodes was just I was I was shocked that it was going to be six. I thought it was going to I thought it was going to be like four. Yeah, because that's what it was last. Nope, six. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. We were blessed. Yeah, and I think I, as I mentioned before, like I joined and started reading Purple Hyacinth after season two already started, so I not only read one at a time. So this was great. I mean, except for obviously when I took caught up, but once they were released, I only went one at a time. So it was so cool to get sex. Yeah, so. We continue where we left off, where Lauren and Kieran are trying to get out of the burning building. They're stumbling. They're, um, Kieran is being supported by Lauren. I don't know how they're walking, but somehow they are. <laughs> Pure force of will, adrenaline. Yeah, mm-hmm. otherwise they'll be run to a crisp, so I guess they really don't have much if a, if, a, if a mom can lift a car off of her baby in the heat of the moment, maybe they're just like, get out. Like, they're just so hopped up on, like, the... Um, what is the word? It's not hormones. The adrenaline, you say? It's like adrenaline, but it's like, uh, there's, I don't know, the word's not, I'm not going to get it. But it's, yeah, it's all those like chemicals in their brain that is just like telling them, like keeping them standing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So um, I believe Kieran is saying the tunnel entrance is end of the corridor. And, you we know, called it. Yeah, tunnel theory at last. <laughs> Oh, and um, it's just the same people who were in the finale, minus food, who's not here with us. But yeah, we were talking about that. True, right? <laughs> so yeah, they their their whole speech throughout this whole episode is punctuated. It's like very it's staccato. It's um it's it's broken off. They're clearly having trouble speaking. You know, they they sometimes like omit words. I know when I'm tired, I don't bother saying a full sentence. I just say like fridge or water. You know, like <laughs> so they're they're having trouble talking. And they finally, you know, reach the end of the corridor, they open the door, and um, yeah, this is the, there's some greenery, this is the tunnel that Kieran spotted earlier. So, um, yeah, they claim it shut, and now they're in the tunnel, and it's kind of like, a, it has a, a domed top, an arch top. They're walking through it, it looks like there's um, like a conduit for water on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Probably something um, connected to the sewer system that they just kind of retrofitted for their own use. Yeah. I mean, I don't imagine that most people don't like go down into the sewers very often. So they could probably yeah. walk around down there mostly without notice. And if you'll remember, remember what I talked about, um, little uh, 38, I think, with, I mean, um, the Batman, the man who mm-hmm. laughs, the man who laughs, he uses the sewer system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he goes under the sewer system and uses that. Um, so that was, I thought, the parallel. So yeah, sewer system. I'm pretty sure this is it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, sorry. So yeah, they're tapping through it. They're kind of, it's black. They're bloody and whatever. And then Kieran sees some holes in the wall. He says, here, he presses it and the door opens. So first I was like, oh, how does he know this? But then he kind of explains himself, right? He pulls the lever shut and the door closes. He says that, um, and Lauren asks him, like, do you know where this leads? And again, they're looking awful. They're dripping sweat and all huffing. And he says, not exactly, but the tunnels usually connect to hideouts or other sewers. Look at the arrows on the wall. So basically, it seems like he has some knowledge of the way the tunnels should work. And that's how he was able to see, like, okay, those, you know, holes meant something. <laughs> meant that you could open the door. 
But ah, oh, these poor like the kids. codes on the wall. It's like for who, whoever knows it and who needs it can use it. Yeah, oh, and they look awful. They look just like completely <laughs> terrible. I mean, I'm shocked that they don't look worse. Honestly, like they were holding a bomb. Like, I mean, they seem they they're definitely not in good shape. But I'm, I mean. I'm surprised that they don't have, like, it doesn't seem like they have any, like, big burn scars, which is, I mean, it's good because those are, like, very permanent. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. I was wondering, like, no burns also, like, how can they hair anything? Because, boom, <laughs> could have popped their eardrums, oh whatever. God. But, like, she can hair lies. Maybe humans in this world are, have a bit more fortification. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. How long after an explosion does your hair go away? My brother was in the Marines and I asked him, I have, I don't hear out of my left ear anymore. So, you know, it's like how it always comes up. And I think he mentioned something like when you're in Marines, like because you're, you know, you're, I asked like, um, do you wear um, like ear, you know, earpieces? He says during training, you're supposed to wear earpieces. But when you're in combat, you cannot wear earpieces. So you lose your hearing um, when you're in the Army, turns out. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, and by the way, he has never spoken to us about combat, so I have no idea what he actually saw. As far as I know, he might have just been a guard, but whatever. Anyway, um, I'm kind of too whipped out to ask him to. Um, so, yeah, so he says, look at the arrows on the wall and his E sign. He says, we'll follow that east. My apartment's in that direction. Which I'm like, first of all, I have a very bad sense of direction, but like, Wow, period. I cannot believe you remember and you can even think about that at this moment. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I'm one of those people who's like, okay, I'm like where I'm sitting right now, I know north is like that direction. Huh. Right? Just because I know my orientation. I know like how that where I'm sitting, like on a map top down, how that looks, and like east is that way, west is that way, south is like that way-ish. Like, I always kind of have to, like, I need to know where I am spatially, or, like, I usually have a good idea of where I am spatially. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really good with directions as well. Like, I once I figured out how to navigate the city, I was like, okay, I'm good. Like, I could kind of know which ways are certain things and, like, make my way there. I'm impressed. I'm not like That's that. just <laughs> me personally. My friend used to call me when she first got her license to um, help navigate her places that she should have been able to know how to get to. But I was I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take us. Even though I didn't know how to drive it. I was like, yeah, turn this way, go straight. See that right, go. <laughs> so I am, yeah, duly impressed. <laughs> I'm yeah, not good at navigating in the slightest. I don't, I think I know mm -hmm. the general direction that North is in, but it could be what I think is West. I don't even, I don't even know. Friend, the same friend who I would navigate, she used to say north is wherever she's facing. Like that's just right. north for her. Right. She's like that. Yeah. That's how I feel. I have to think about it. because I think that, I think that if I thought about it for like a couple of minutes, I know how to get onto the highway that goes 278 east. So I think once I think about that, I would be able to orient myself. No, not really because it turns up before it goes east. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I think I do. Anyway, whatever. Point is, Kieran can can follow the east path, eastward path to his apartment, and they're walking, coughing, and Kieran like crashes down, like he is collapsing, and Lauren basically is just like pulling him along at this point, and she's grimacing because she's dragging him, essentially. I'm like, oh my god. I wonder who has it worse, because, like, Lauren has lost a lot more blood than Kieran because she got shot, and probably that arm probably hurts a lot, but also because Kieran got beaten, like, less than a week before this, he's probably not good either, and I don't know if maybe he got, like, more of the brunt of the explosion, because he was out, Lauren was the first one to come to, so maybe he got, like, more hit by it, I don't know, like, wondering these things. <clears throat> I mean, it seems yeah. probably Kieran got it worse just because he's normally good at powering through stuff. I mean, like, you know, he went to work the day after getting beaten up. Like, he's normally pretty good at powering through stuff. If you can't power through this, like, it's probably really bad. Mm. Yeah. 
Yep. So, but believe it or not, they, you know, this pothole opens and they emerge through it. I don't know how they always get themselves up out of it. I guess it was a ladder, but you know, she's pulling Kieran out. He's again, like literally collapsing all the time and they are staggering towards his apartment and miraculously they actually reach it, which I, again, this was in terms of like, we discussed a little bit last episode 107 that we just recorded um, timing where it's like, a lot of the fandom, I think, expected the, the suspense to last longer and like the uh, the wondering, are they dead? Are they alive? Are they going to be okay? What's up with them to be longer? But like they reach safety pretty fast. Like, yeah, they're all beat up and like they're alive and they reach his apartment in <laughs> like one episode. So I was a bit, I was, a, I was surprised at that. I don't know if you guys were. I mean, I personally, surprised. I'm glad. Like, I was surprised, but I'm glad because, like, having to wait a long time for this, even though, you know, I already waited, like, six months, but having to wait more time after they were, you know, shown, like, after the season, after it was back, would probably stress me out for a long time. And I'm glad that they're back because I feel like there's so much stuff, like, new things in the season to deal with that I wouldn't be able to also focus on, like, not even knowing if they're okay or not. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I feel like it was fast and I like I expected it to be like I made a list of like the things I'm most afraid of happening. It's like they get maimed, they like lose limbs, like all these other things, right? Lucas dies, like but like then just it looks like everybody's getting out and like everything and then they're immediately back at his apartment by like the first like within like basically an episode's worth of time. And it's just like, huh. So in a way, I was like, my expectations were like played with, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It just makes like one for one thing. I'm like, I'm kind of glad that they wrapped it up pretty quickly because this arc went on for like three months, I think. And it's kind of just nice to kind of get it done. Like, you know, even though I can see obviously that if it's such a long arc, it should have like a long resolution, but the probably the needs of the story required it to be wrapped up more quickly I don't know but like honestly I don't mind it like it surprised me kind of made me go hmm but I don't mind it yeah the the uh all the action was kind of like like I liked it but it was like I needed some time to like you know I I felt like the arc was definitely like one of the longest ones we've had so far and like I did like it kind of like it was hard to follow like action wise so I'm glad that we're probably having a calmer I mean you know it's not going to be calm at all but it's going to be calmer than the past arc peaks and valleys we're in a valley valley right now yeah I think I think that was what I thought as well like I was surprised I was like you know I guess they they have they want to move the story along and they have other you know arcs that they want to focus on you know to continue the story so they come in and it's raining, obviously, <laughs> to add to the drama. They creak open the door and Kieran's like, oh, sweet home. <laughs> obviously, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's very comforting. They stumble and literally just crash down right by the wall. Luckily for them, there's a telephone there, but they, you know, you see their wounds, they're throbbing, they're dirty, like everything is just like messed up for them. This, they're cut all over. And then Kieran, like, scratches his hand along to reach the telephone barely reaches it like it just inches his fingers and then he's you know you see him blurry so lauren's blinking out again and you he can... manages to reach it hmm? i'm sorry you can finish it I'll, I'll get to my thought after hmm? um yeah he manages to reach it and lauren's like what are you doing and he says calling my doctor since we can't really show up to a hospital right now and she's like as in your phantom side doctor and he's like yeah don't worry. He knows better than to talk about you. <laughs> and the, do you want to add up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're not here. So I really like that they like so did a lot of like cut to the hand and back to him, then back to his hand and back to him because it kind of just shows like this is taking a lot out of him to just even reach just above his head and reach up for the telephone. Like he is so completely sapped of energy and just having that back and forth, back and forth, like kind of makes it feel like it's it's taking long so it's like you just kind of feel the weight of his like exhaustion through that and I I think that was a really smart choice to have it 
shown like that because you really feel how just dead he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so much. The visuals are, as, as always, just beautiful and so appropriate. And yeah, they, they look so exhausted. And so, yeah, so, and he, he dials and he speaks to the doctor, good morning, doc. So it's already like morning time-ish. Like, nope, not dead yet. I can't believe it. He's like joking already. <laughs> Even when he's like about to like, I don't know, pass out, he's still joking. He's at home sweet home when he's like half dead being dragged <laughs> into his house, like home sweet home. I mean, we've all felt like that after just a very long day. As soon as you open the door, just like relief. Like, I don't know about you, so maybe even that was just like, nice, I'm home, finally. Just a little part of him that wasn't completely exhausted. And Kieran is a big uh, humor coper as well. He uses humor to cope a lot. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I am surprised that he's like, even though he uses it a lot, I'm surprised that he's using it in this serious of a situation. Yeah. That makes me wonder, right? Because we he has saw this doctor, the same guy after he got beaten up. He was the guy who got who checked him out and patched him up and everything. I wonder if like bringing up the doctor twice, because I'm kind of glad that it's like, oh, they've established that he's a doctor that he goes to that, like whatever. Like they established that before. So I'm glad that kind of like not just a random thing. It's like you have a doctor, like no, they have they established that in season two, but if this doc he and this doctor have a particular relationship for some reason, I don't know. Like, for him to be, like, so nonchalant about him seeing Lauren, for example, like, I don't know, that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. What do you guys think? I mean, I think yeah. that this doctor is probably really afraid of him. I mean, he did say, like, he knows better than to talk about Lauren. So, like, I assume that he's probably afraid of Kieran. I mean, anyone in the fandom size would be. But, yeah, like, I wonder what Kieran is, has on him, maybe. Ooh. It's really interesting because, like, yeah, it seems like he seems so much more, like, he's got a different type of joking with, like, because we've seen how he talks to Phantom Scythe members. He has right. a different type of, like, joking with them than he does with people that he's, like, you know, Lauren or, like, more, like, people in the APD and stuff like that. He's got different types of, like, humor. And it's interesting because he seems to be using the not like persona one he's using like his actual yeah like his he's actually joking like you know i don't yeah. know how to word this in a good way but like he's genuine like he, it's not coming from a place of um deflection like yeah yeah and i think i think um i, I don't know if it's that the doctor is afraid of him i think that it's that he and the doctor just have a, a trusting relationship I think it can be one of the other, well, especially we'll see them later, but Both. I think that, you know, it's, it's going to be one of the good people in his life. I mean, that's what I'm hoping, but knowing that the doctor's in the Phantom Scythe, it's probably, he's also probably, I mean, even just a little bit afraid of him because like, I mean, I would be too, like just, from what I, I know thought... about him, I would be very afraid of him. <laughs> I just thought of something that made me sad. What if it's like the same doctor who probably patched him up a lot when he was like when he was like younger, like you know, because we've seen flashbacks to like whatever he's gone through with the fans of so like, like the torture and everything. We know he's been shot before, like all the other things. What if that's the guy that's been patching him up this whole time? So it's like I mean, the guy did look decently older. like old enough that he could have been a doctor while he was, you know, a few years ago. So it's honestly probably pretty likely. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, I don't like to think about baby Kieran getting hurt, man. <laughs> well, now we could just continue and see Kieran actually hurt now. <laughs> Not much better. Right. He's like, don't be so surprised. I'll get offended. <laughs> All right, you know the place. And she's like, that's convenient. And yeah, the full phone just hangs down, as we mentioned earlier. Like, he doesn't even have the energy to hang it up. And but then you can see your theory now with the phone hanging down. Yeah, I mentioned this before we started recording. So, like, this is just a thing that pops up in my head. I have no evidence to substantiate this, right? But, like, obviously, they, like, leaving the phone hanging could just show that he's so exhausted that he's, he can't even reach up to put it down. He just, like, drops it as soon as the call is done. And he, um, 
the doctor hangs up. But I was wondering whether or not, because we know that people have like wiretapped other people to like listen to their phone calls. Like, what if Kieran's phone is tapped by like the fans of Scythe or someone else? We know that Belladonna has been tasked to like follow him and like watch over his moves. What if she got access to that? I don't know. I have no evidence, but it's like that phone is hanging there. So whatever conversation's going on, him calling the doctor, him calling like anybody could just be picked up by that and that has me concerned but I like it could just be that it was shown hanging there just to show that he couldn't put it back on the hook but it could be other things I don't know I don't know how phone tapping works if it just being off the hook allows you to hair I don't know so that was just a thing that popped up in my mind I mean now that you're now that we're like on this panel I'm realizing it gets a full like panel like it is very obviously the like it's very obviously pointing towards the phone and yeah it could probably be just because you know it's showing that he's tired but at the same time like i don't know i mean there's always a chance improvising with anything is like we can't like we have to assume everything (laughs) if this does become a thing though you heard it here first i don't know if you bring that up so yep yeah, so he says he's been doing an amazing job at keeping me alive, maybe too amazing, which is so sad because that's like Kieran having a death wish, wishing he wasn't alive. I mean, didn't he say after he got beaten up, you could, you didn't have to leave me alive or something? It's oh, like, so sad. It's a really sad, sad thing to say. Well, yeah. And Lauren asks, is it even safe to be here? I thought your apartment was being watched. He's like, hopefully, not all the time. <laughs> Can you think of a be- better place to hide anyways? Unless you want to walk across the entire city to get to the cave. So yeah, um, no options. And she's like, you're right. This floor seems very fine to me. <laughs> so they can barely talk. And they're just like slumped on the floor. They haven't moved an inch. Um, poor kids. <laughs> I really feel bad for them. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, how long is it going to take for the doctor to arrive? I need to get home, though. <laughs> Girl, you, how are you going to get home? You can't even move. <laughs> I Your mean, the, thing, work. the fact that she obviously seems more, like, her priorities are making sure that people don't know like she's got to know that she's like literally dying she doesn't know she's dying and her priorities are people not knowing which is interesting because you can see how much she wants to keep the two lives separate like yeah. she's going through she would be willing to go through potentially die, like you know even more pain i think it's just her like overestimating her own abilities like it reminds me sort of of when she fell out of the tree and she messed up her foot and Kieran was like, you can't walk. And she's like, yes, I can. And like walks and she, he's like, no, you can't like scoops her up. And it's just like, she pushes herself beyond her physical limits sometimes out of maybe not pride. I don't know if pride is the right, right word for it, but more out of like, she believes that she can do it. So she will do it. And she doesn't really want anyone's help, doesn't want to be seen as like weak or anything. But I think in this case, it's more that she's really concerned about protecting their identities and maybe just wants to go home, you know? Like if if mm-hmm. you're like really hurting or like you're sick or anything like that, being home is just inherently comforting as well. Abundant, Kieran's home is her home. <laughs> in our dreams, Mindy. No, in reality. <laughs> Here's just seasons episodes, perhaps we can do that. <laughs> I don't I don't need my simp jumping out. <laughs> Am I super hot? So he's like, it should be soon. It should be. And then like the arm is twitching soon and just stops. Like it's so sad. <laughs> it's so messed up. And Lauren's like, I have to go home. Uncle precinct tomorrow and yeah she can't even form a sentence they'll know where Lily there's no way they won't know and, and then she actually suggests this right we were talking about what we said earlier will they believe me if I said I were in a car crash 
even if we survive tonight, we're going to jail. Which, you know, reminds me of that line where Hermione says, <laughs> like, we could get killed or worse, expelled. <laughs> like, in the words of Ron Weasley, she needs to sort out her priorities. <laughs> you know, Lauren's priorities are like, not, she needs to fix them. So she's funny. like, okay, don't die. <laughs> But but what if we get caught though? <laughs> yeah, well, she, like, I mean, she, she gets shot. She's like just a flesh that. wound. Like, <laughs> but I need to be home by nine o'clock. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like not dying is at least for me much more of a priority than you know being arrested. Yeah. It's like your hierarchy of needs, you know, the pyramid thing and right. like <laughs> your base like her them like being alive, that's like the base thing for living, like you know, food, water, all that. Her getting caught is maybe like the thing at the tip of the pyramid, just the little thing. You need to <laughs> sort out your base first. Uh, well, I think if, if she's dead, she doesn't have to worry about anything. So, <laughs> anyway, there, you know, there's a hazy vision, there's no response. And then Lauren asks, Kieran, why does the purple hyacinth never use a gun? And I like how she says, she doesn't say, why do you never use a gun? I think it's because she understands that the purple hyacinth is a persona that he puts on, and she does not identify that as him. She realizes that, that there's a Kieran beneath that persona, and that purple hyacinth is kind of either something he's forced into, which we know that, or, you know, it's an act, and she recognizes that there is a separate Kieran that's not the purple hyacinth. And I think it's so profound and beautiful of her to say that. Yeah, I noticed that, too. I was just like, ooh. Like, she, she's not, she's separating the personas, but, like, I don't want to say that she sees them as two different people because he is the purple hyacinth, like, but she kind of recognizes, like, what he's doing is not, like, you know, it's not out of, like, evil or, like, anything. It's something deeper. I think ever since her talk with Sandman about, like, his daughter being killed, but him being, like, she would be dead anyways, and, like, do you think that he leaves those flowers as a threat? And she's like, no. And that kind of like solidifies it in her head, I think. So if I think from that point onward, from like when she forgave him in 93, that it's been, we have Kieran and then when he's, and then there's when he's purple hyacinth, but he's not the purple hyacinth. Like he's not fundamentally the pur purple hyacinth. Yep, 100%. And I'm so happy that she's asking that question because we have been wondering that for a long time. And I think this was something that he said, he, you know, he says it, so I'm super excited. She says, why did you use one earlier? And he says, it was the only solution, wasn't it? Oh. To protect the people that I saw dancing, laughing. When I got to that, that, I started crying. I just have to take a break to start crying because like, Especially because he put, like, especially because Kim is in there, it means that he must still, like, he knows how much, how important Kim is to Lauren and knows that Kim, that Lauren would want to protect Kim. And so, therefore, Kim is important to him. And it's just, like, I feel like Kim, I mean, Kim probably thinks of everyone as her friends, but, like, I think that she probably lumps Kieran into her friend group at this point. And it's just, God, I just started crying at this part. Yeah, it's very, very beautiful. Yeah, no, like, just him, like, calling back to that scene, because um, that's one of my favorite parts of that episode is when he's just standing there to the side looking at them having fun, like, everybody, but then he kind of snaps back, realizing, like, he can't have this. This is not mine. They're not my friends. I promised I wouldn't do this, like, all that stuff, but he still sees them as good people, and that they're friends with Lauren, and, like, I don't think it's not just because of their relationship to Lauren. I think he's seen how they are fundamentally and he just knows that he can't let them die, you know? Yeah, it's it's very sweet and it shows that, you know, <clears throat> all this time that he was with the police department, he, um, he's he been developing friendships and, you know, feelings for them. He cares about them despite what he tries to, you know, say. Uh, we'll pretend he doesn't. 
So yeah, and with, we have this beautiful flashback of them dancing, says laughing, fighting to connect to others, and living. Oh, so yeah, he feels that what they do is virtuous. You know, he feels that the the his friends at the APT are trying to to help society. Oh, so beautiful. Ah, and he says they didn't deserve to die there. Laura looks at him. And she's dizzy and blinking. She's like, so why a sword? And he looks back at her and like, he's not deflecting at all. He's being completely honest. He's answering her. He's looking into her eyes. He's not looking away. I mean, it's really amazing, right? What near-death experiences will do to you. Like the closest that they've, cre they've created between them. I think also is just that he's so exhausted that I don't even think he has the capacity to like think of some other thing to say or quip or anything like no he and like and like you said he, they've been through this so he's like there's no point in lying to her she'll yeah. know I'm lying one but also he's just like too exhausted to like hold it back <laughs> at least that part of it yeah Right, it's true. Like his defenses are down. He can't, doesn't have the energy to maintain the facade. So he looks down and he pants and he says, looks at his hands, which obviously we know he's always looked at his hands and seen blood on them and seen this a symbol of his guilt. So now he looks at his hands and he, he's not seeing guilt on them. He's just seeing his hands. You know, they're very ragged and very, you know, not in good shape. But it's, I think it's good that he doesn't see that right now. And he says, Chilling with a gun is too easy. And she's like, yes, that's what I said. You just pull the trigger and then you see an outline of his hand with all the drawings of humanity, right? That he drew, like all the beautiful things in life. And he says, and lives are ended so effortlessly as if they're all just meaningless. Ah, oh, yes. This is what I said before. He's, this God, this panel. This panel is probably with the black and white, probably my favorite of all of the new up one or one of my favorites of all the new episodes because it just like you can see it just like it I feel like it says so much. Like even in just the art. It's so beautiful. Like yeah, it, it's almost like a window into his mind's eye, right? Like you can picture him in his exhausted state. He's probably maybe he's not even seeing in color. He's like like, you know, he's just so exhausted and it's just like the basic things, but then he's picturing all of the things and like the, his hand and everything. Like it, it feels like a point of view, literally, how he mm -hmm. sees things. And I think it's just wonderful. It is one of the standout panels, I think, of this, mm -hmm. this new batch of episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, artwork, gorgeous as always. Okay. And, you know, this, this is what a lot of the fandom has said that, you know, he doesn't want to... And he kills with a sword because he doesn't want to take the easy, easy way out. So, yeah, Kieran, are, uh, Kieran has a soul. He's not the you know flippant monster that he pretends to be. You know, thinks he is. So, yes, confirmation is good. <laughs> and then he remembers Bang, and he remembers when he was shot. Remember, this is when he was with Belladonna. He was shot. So now he says that's all there is to it. But that's a lie. He's saying that, right? He's saying that to Lauren. I was a little confused on like, this flashback, but no, I think he's saying it to Lauren. So clearly, there is more to it, and I think it's connected to when he got shot. What do you think? He has a, a deep aversion for firearms, and I think one of the clues to that is the fact that he can use a gun perfectly. He mm -hmm. can. He seems to be a, a sharpshooter, a sharpshooter that could almost rival Kim, because mm. he got headshots on four people within like a second in the in the um, last season right which is insane you even with his beat up body and everything he could hold that up aim it get it so he was clearly trained with it somehow and he hates either hated being trained with it didn't like maybe he'd had to kill people with guns before didn't like it something with this operation he had with belladonna when they were younger it like signifies maybe the end of when he began to like when he began to switch to blades and swords but I don't know there's something there that I'm really curious about I know like I feel like it's this is one of the things that I feel like the answer is like right there and we're so close because <laughs> we've been getting so many hints about it for a while but we just haven't gotten enough to put them all together yet mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, and I think that the fact that, that we have that memory of the operation with Bella is not meaningless. I think that it could be what you said before, Brendan, about him being forced to kill people who don't want to kill. But there must be something to do with that that um, operation with Bella, which is interesting because when we had that flashback, you know, um, he's kind of like joking around <laughs> the actual flashback. Bella's like, oh, you've got a shot already. You're the promising new recruit. And just like spits it out. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe it was some kind of operation that was emotionally meaningful for him. Mm. So yeah, he stops, right? And I think I think he stops because he knows he's lying and he knows that Lauren will probably still pick up on it even though she's like half dead. So I think that he's stopping himself for that. And he looks over at her and you know, he's dizzy, he's blanking out. And Lauren asks another question, which is like, yes, yes. Again, another thing that was resolved and I thought would never get resolved or like me resolved like months down the line. She asks him, you know, you never finished what you were going to say earlier, if this is the end. And oh my gosh, I have to tell you that I, right? This is a flashback. And he says, right. And he pauses a little bit, but he says, he says it. I'm like shocked, but he says it. like, oh my gosh. He's like, I wanted to tell you that, but I'm thankful for you too. You've, I'm a better person because of you. All of this, Life makes a bit more sense since I've met you. <laughs> I have my opinions on this. I think personally, this is so much better than we're like, oh yeah, I could have, you know, wanted to say like, I love you or something. This is so much better in my opinion because it's got so much like more meaning to it. I feel like because not only like he's saying that he's like, he doesn't think as low of himself anymore. Like, he genuinely probably does not like himself, but he thinks that he is, he, he can realize that he's a better person now, which is great because it's like, you know, it's not only appreciating Lauren, it's also appreciating himself. Aww. So well like, said. I think as well, like, think about if you were, if you hadn't met Lauren, like, and he was in the position of Kim and Wills, like, what if he was put into the, the police station, never met Lauren or anything? ended up in the factory and Will and Kim and stuff like that. He wouldn't have saved them. Like he wouldn't have done that. But like through Lauren, he has been like brought back to life in a way. Cause I think like you said, he probably has a lot of self-loathing for like what he does, right? What he's been forced to do, the life he's had to live. So her through her and like what she's kind of opened him up to, he kind of realizes that he has things to live for, has things to do, has desires, has morals still. He's not just a monster. And it's so it's just nice to see. And it's it feels really sincere. Like, and it's there's no room to for interpretation. Like, what if he met something else? No, he said, I wanted to tell you this. That is not a lie. That is exactly mm -hmm. what he was gonna tell her. And it's just mm -hmm. the best. It is. It's great. You know, we're always kind of being strung along in the horizon. Now we're getting answers. You know, we're getting that emotional sipuk, that satisfaction. Well, just not get any more answers for another 50 episodes. <laughs> Knock on wood. I mean, with the cliffhanger that we got, we probably aren't going to get more answers for a lot of episodes. I know, right? It's going to be, well, we'll talk about it when we get there, so yeah. just not this episode, so whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so beautiful. And she's like, hmm, that disgrace detective making a notorious assassin a better person so that's her joke <laughs> while she's lying they can joke and she's like like i said a match made in hell but not and then this drop of water falls down and she thinks in her head a bad one but never really has to say it we see you know we focus on kieran now and then suddenly it like whites out behind him and there's um, like, oh, we hear a path sound and we see just her head kind of going down and Karen looks over, his eyes widen and boom, she has like fainted apparently. You know, her, she has no more eyes and that's that. And he's like, Lauren. I have fainted for less, I will say. So <laughs> yeah. well done for holding up this long, Lauren. No, good on her. Like I would have, I would not have made, like I would not have been able to, 
carry a grown man all the way like you know <laughs> multiple blocks no i'd be i'd be done uh, are you there record again okay yeah. yeah it's just like this is such a pain this episode just like i know it's not the like it's not even the most angstiest of the episodes like of all of the series like by far but it still hurt like it still really hurts because you can see how like i don't know you're just like you both learn like a ton about the characters in this episode just like and also i don't know just seeing them in so much pain because of like what they've you know done to protect other people it's just like i mean it, it's it's nice but also like i it, i like hurt yeah. you know i um i really this i think this episode and the next one are two of my personal favorites just like selfishly my favorites if that makes sense just because i'm lucky trash but I, I also, I'm 100% with you. <laughs> but I also just fundamentally enjoy the dynamic and the relationship and like the trust that's been built and all of that sort of like, like just just the relationship by itself, not ship related, is still so compelling and interesting to see and like getting glimpses into them and themselves, them revealing so much of themselves to each other because they're both at their lowest points probably like or that they've been in in a while in terms of like just mentally physically emotionally destroyed so they have not they kind of have no barriers to these this conversation right so i love it but i was gonna say as well like for lauren to have to drag him in the rain in the tunnel to the his house right which is like quite in the middle of the city i think like from the docks basically and i'm just like how like <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever had to carry a person who's virtually dead weight before. Um, my time in college, some of my friends drank too much and they literally are dead weight in your arms. It is not easy with multiple people trying to hold them up. So having no, Lauren, wow. who is shot, beaten up, all blown up, basically, doing <laughs> that, it's just like, God, these, what are they feeding these two? Like, what are they on? Like, there, mu there must be something, like that really pushes them. I know, it's just like having, you can tell how much they trust each other just based on how they're letting, like, th through this episode, you can, like, Lauren is, like, totally fine to, like, hear him just do what he needs to do, which is great because it's, like, I, I, I've i some, I'm, like, a lot of, a lot through this, I've had this, like, fear that Lauren still, I mean, I'm sure she doesn't still fully trust him, but, like, I've had this fear that she doesn't trust him as much as I think she does. But I'm, it's being really, it's been relieved in this episode for the most part. Because she, she trusts him enough to, you know, go unconscious with it next, like, and have his doctor from the phantom side treat her. Like. Yeah, she doesn't really have a choice, honestly. What's she going to do? I mean, that's true. But, like, she, she trusts him enough to not, like, she doesn't even, like, you know, fight back at all. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's one Lauren would have fully been like, what? Like, even if she's like dying, like, you know, she's like, I need to get home. It, her, all of her energy instead of being like, I need to get home would have been like, this doctor, what the hell? Like, he's gonna know, like, mm -hmm. I can fully see that. So I don't think you're wrong there. Yeah. And, and like you said about Din, like, that's what I also love about these next, this episode and the next one is just the low key dynamic. They're finally friends. They're finally, like, they're not like snickering or, joking or antagonistic they're just like having a relationship a normal relationship as normal, normal as they can get <laughs> you know, uh it was something we were robbed of after 43 we they were on the cusp of this like like 60 episodes ago and we've had to crawl our way through the trenches and now we're finally here but in a way i feel like it's almost stronger like again he's like doing all so many he's done so many things to try to atone for that he's never mm -hmm. once asked for forgiveness for it he's just trying to make up for it in a way and it's not a way to like make her forgive it's just to try to make it up for her but not for her to like accept him he kind of was like stepping back and everything well before that 
But I think at this point, they're just like, you are the only person who fully understands like the scope of everything that's going on. He like, like he's the only person who knows this part of her life, which is a huge part of her life. And like, there's only a few things he doesn't know about. Like he doesn't know about Dylan and maybe a couple other things, but she is his, her, her number one confidant at this point, even more so than Kim, because Kim yeah. doesn't know anything at this point. So, mm-hmm. and then him, she's the only person he's, she's just his only friend, basically he's had in years. So I don't know. I just, I just appreciate it a lot. <clears throat> Yeah, this episode is just yeah. like such a beautiful episode. I love it. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it fulfills all the soft things, you know, in your heart. <laughs> and Minnie, I keep looking at your background because I'm just like, yes. No, oh, they're touching each other's faces so tenderly. Mm. <laughs> You're just trying to hand move. <laughs> oh, no, but so it's sweet. uh this is one of my favorite relationships for sure. Like in anything, so I'm, I really like seeing the progress, the trust, the, the the little things that we see, are just really gratifying, and just shows so much character development, growth, all of that, and I just I love it. <sighs> Beautiful. Well, we'll get some more of it this season, and I'm hoping we'll get a lot more of it this season. <laughs> Yep. Well, thank you so, so much for joining Emma and Brendan. It was fantastic. And I will see you again another time, hopefully. Yeah, thank you for having Bye. us. Again. Thank you for having us. All right. Have a good day. Bye. 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 <laughs> thank you so much to my current patrons Susie, Lady Libris, Lily, Jenny, Haley, Molly, Veronica, Emily, Emily, Joe, Rochelle, Saucy Puggles, Meg, and Rose Priya, Alexa, Misty, Laura. Joanne, Patty, and Milta Esther, and watching a people tourist prophecy, Marie, Jen, Emily, Jean, Jen, Erin, D, Kay, Lily, Beckett, Miranda, Christine, Sadie, Kelly, Daniel, Teresa, Mr. Gostaldo, and Kaylee. Your support is truly appreciated.